And I'm going to place a, like a sled on the level ground with a box on it. 10 kilogram box. Now I'm going to pull on the box with a 50 Newton force. When this force acts on the box, the box moves to the right with a constant velocity. Identify and find the size of all the forces acting on the sled. That's the question. Now, to work a problem like this, just like yesterday, the first thing you should do is attempt to frame the problem. Try and decide what you know, and if you can, determine whether this problem fits the rules of a first law problem or a Newton's second law problem. So, is this a first or a second law problem? Do you have enough information to decide? It's a first law problem. We have enough information to decide because it says constant velocity. So the fact that it's moving, that's not the issue. You have to decide whether it's accelerating or not. If it's not accelerating, it's a first law problem. Now, this tells you something that you should pay attention to. The forces in this system are balanced, which means there's equal parts of the forces pulling in all directions. That should help guide the next part of this process, which is a free body diagram. Drawing the free body diagram is a bit of an art, but there are a series of steps that you should be following in order to draw your free body diagram, which starts with taking the object in question and reducing it to a dot. And then from here, going through your check boxes and asking yourself, Simple, straightforward questions. You don't have to do much thinking here. You have to apply the rule of each force. For example, is this object near the surface of a planet? Because if the answer is yes, then the fundamental force of gravity is acting on the object. It's a simple question that has a straightforward solution. Draw yourself a downwards arrow. Now the size of this arrow is an attempt to set the scale for the rest of your drawing. So let me hit pause. All right, I gotta keep going through my check boxes. So my next one is to ask, is my object in contact with any surface? If it is, I must draw an arrow indicating a normal force that is perpendicular to the surface. I don't have a choice here. If it's touching a surface, then there's a normal force. It is touching the ground. And because it's touching the ground, that means there is a normal force, an upwards force, because it has to be perpendicular to the ground. I believe this force is the same size as the gravitational force. So I'm trying to draw it to be about the same size. It looks like I kind of failed though. I'm gonna label this normal. And in all my talking, I forgot to label this one 100 newtons. I could put W for weight, but they tell me it's 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms is 100 newtons. All right, so my next question, is there any cord, cable, chain, rope pulling on the object? If so, I must draw an arrow consistent with the direction of that particular chain, rope, or cord. So that suggests this way but I'm not gonna draw it as long as the other arrows. I know what 100 Newtons looks like, and this one's 50. So I am gonna draw it smaller on purpose to ensure that I am trying to be consistent with scale. I don't care if it's perfectly half the size, I just care that it's smaller. Now, the next question is a little more ambiguous and might be more difficult for you to answer even here. Is there a frictional force? Now, we're not told that there's friction. And friction is an ambiguous part of these problems. 
you're constantly going to be asking yourself if friction is involved. First, the conditions for friction exist. There's a normal force. That's the first condition. There's a surface attempting to scrape against another surface. That's another condition for friction. But they love to say friction is negligible. And sometimes they make it more confusing than that. They'll say the sled is on a smooth surface or the sled is on ice. They will try and obfuscate it or hide what they're trying to tell you. Smooth is a synonym for no friction. Rough is a synonym for friction. If they say rough, they're trying to tell you there's friction. If they say smooth, they're probably trying to tell you there's no friction or negligible friction. I know that that sounds very ambiguous. The only way to come to grips with that is to practice. However, in this case, we have added information to tell us whether there's friction or not. We have all the conditions for friction, but we also know the net force is zero, which suggests balance. Does my picture look balanced now? No. I mean, up and down a little bit, but left to right, certainly not. All of those things are evidence that there is very likely a frictional force acting to the left and that I better take it into account. Now, I should also go through the rest of them. There are several others. Is drag a part of my problem? Is my object moving through some kind of fluid that is attempting to restrict its motion? Now, there's probably air there, but unless they bring it up, I don't think I have to worry about it. That generally is always true. If they don't bring it up, you usually don't have to worry about it. Now, it might be that there's friction and drag, but look, I'm not trying to make these complicated. We're gonna ignore drag for a while. Is thrust a part of this problem? Is there a rocket engine or jet engine strapped to my sled? If not, you can ignore it. I think we're pretty safe here. So we have gone through all of the forces that you guys have to worry about right now. Our next step is to start making this something that we can use to solve the problem, which means draw in a coordinate system. Now look, you can draw your coordinate system in any direction that you want. Any direction that you want. If you're copying what I'm doing right now, you're kind of foolish. Because does this look like the way you should go about solving this problem? No. no. Look, you want to draw a coordinate system that makes it so that you can just say the normal force is in the y direction or something like that. Right now, I can't do that. I've I've made this as hard as possible to solve now. The absolute worst. So no, let's not do it this way. Let's try and find a way that might be a little bit more successful and that might simplify the problem. So I'm gonna choose a coordinate system that's as lined up with as many forces as is possible. Also be aware your coordinate system has to be drawn in such a way that X and Y are at right angles to each other. I had somebody last class period draw the y-axis like this compared to the x-axis. That's a big no. All right. I've drawn in a coordinate system. My next job is, again, instructional. I take the law that I've been given and break it up into the net force in the x direction and net force in the y direction. If it's zero, it's easy. If it's MA, it's harder. Because if it's MA, I gotta pick if MA goes with the X direction or MA goes with the Y direction. But if it's zero, they're both zero. All right, now my last thing is to follow my instructions. These are instructions. Add up all the forces in the X direction and set them equal to zero. I notice there are two forces in the X direction. I'm going to add them up, but I'm gonna be careful to respect what direction they point. The 50 Newtons is positive, but the friction is negative. Add up all the forces in the X direction, set them equal to zero. Keep going. Add up all the forces in the Y direction. 
set them equal to zero. All right, I have two forces in the y direction. Normal force points up, weight points down, set them equal to zero. When you are done, you will be looking at a couple of relationships that hopefully you can use to figure out your answer. Now the truth is, I probably didn't have to do all that work. Once I knew there was balance, I knew this had to be 50. I knew this had to be 100. I mean, once I saw the picture and knew it had to be balanced, I, I could see that. Some of you are gonna begin to suspect that there's ways you can shorten your work. And you'll be right. There are lots of ways to shorten the amount of work here. But I'm also making sure that if there is no way to shorten your work, that you have a way to get to the answer. This works for everybody. So if you don't see a shortcut, if you don't see some symmetry, then, then you start, add them all up in the X, add them all up in the Y. There's get, bound to be a way to get to the answer. This is what it looks like to take it up a notch. I'm not gonna change it very much. I don't think I have to. Let's, let's stay with the same kind of sled analogy. Let's stay with the same 10 kilogram box on my sled. This time, however, let's pull the sled with 50 Newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. And let's say that the sled is on this new surface. So under this force, it accelerates at two meters per second squared to the right. So this is my new situation. Just small modifications and tweaks to the last one. But when I look at this, my first instinct is to say, what do you think is happening? Can you tell whether this is a first law problem or a second law problem? All right, so we all agree it's a second law. Sure, that's a great thing to agree to. Net force must equal MA, why? Because I tell you it's accelerating. That's a pretty good reason. But let's not stop there. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I have not lifted the sled from the ground. I'm pulling up on it, but am I pulling up hard enough to lift it off the ground? It sounds kind of silly to even think this way, but I'm pulling with a 50 Newton force on a 100 Newton sled. I know you're not familiar with Newtons, but can you lift a 100 Newton sled with a 50 Newton force? No, so there's no way I could lift the sled off the ground. However, I am lifting upwards on it. That might mean something in a little bit. Have any of you ever like stood on a scale and pushed on the wall to see if you can get the numbers to change? Your scale tells you the normal force. It tells you how hard the earth must push up on you to keep you from falling through the floor. So do you note that if I pull up on this sled, I am probably manipulating the normal force here. Because it is possible I could pull up hard enough to lift the sled and therefore there'd be no normal force. Perhaps I'm walking on ice and I wanna make sure that I don't break through the ice. So I'm lifting up on it a little bit. So, I'm gonna pause here and tell you to draw your free body diagram. And then I'm gonna walk around and take a look at your work. Ask yourself the following questions. Is my object close to the surface of the earth? Should I include a gravitational force of weight? If so, draw a downward arrow. Is my object in contact with any surface? If so, I must draw a perpendicular arrow to the surface, indicating the presence of a normal force. Doesn't matter what direction the surface is, the arrow must be perpendicular to the surface. Is 
is there a rope, chain, cable, cord, string, handle? Is there something attached to the object to which I am pulling on or to which the object is being pulled? If so, draw an arrow in the direction of that cable or rope or chain and label it tension. Is the object experiencing a normal force and is the object attempting to slide across that surface? If both conditions are met, you are probably in the presence of a frictional force. Draw an arrow that opposes motion. It must be perpendicular to the normal force and parallel to the surface. Is my object moving through a fluid in such a way that the fluid is trying to impede the motion of the object? If so, draw an arrow to indicate drag that is in the opposite direction of the object's velocity. Is the object experiencing a force of thrust due to the expulsion of some hot gas or fuel, like from a jet engine or a rocket engine? If so, draw a force vector in the direction the engine pushes. that you guys drew a downward arrow to indicate the weight and hopefully labeled it 100 Newtons. I wanna know that you guys drew a shorter arrow at an angle of 30 degrees and labeled it 50 Newtons to indicate there's tension. I wanna know that you guys drew an upward arrow smaller than the weight, labeled normal force, recognizing that the tension is pulling up a small amount so the normal force doesn't have to be as large as the weight. And I wanna know that you drew a frictional force that is perpendicular to the normal force, parallel to the surface. and no other forces are present. Now look, in fifth and sixth period, I saw frictional forces like this. I guarantee you, you're gonna get it wrong and you'll get everything wrong from that point forward. Friction must be perpendicular to the normal force. It must be parallel to the ground. It's not gonna act at an angle like this unless the ground is angled like that. So all of you who did it, correct it. It's wrong. And if there's one point for each arrow, you got three out of four. And your math is gonna be wrong later. All right, so moving on, I need to draw a coordinate system. Now, when you're drawing your coordinate system, I suggested that you use a coordinate system that's lined up with as many forces as possible. That does not mean you draw a coordinate system that isn't at right angles. This will be wrong, but people will draw this because the given force was at that angle. But that's wrong. X and Y have to be at a right angle to each other. And I know there's somebody out there who drew it that way, even though we just made fun of it a moment ago. I will say, this one makes the most sense. Even though one of the forces isn't lined up with it. There's two reasons to use this one. One of them is that three of the forces are lined up. But the other reason and the more important reason is that the acceleration is in this direction. It is always beneficial to line it up in the direction of the acceleration, always. 
I will label this positive x, positive y, negative x, negative y, and we now have a new problem. Something to which I'm going to have to create a new step. You'll notice that normal force, friction, and weight are all nicely, cleanly lined up with my coordinate system, but the tension is not. If you draw your coordinate system and your forces are not lined up with the coordinate system, you must break your off-axis forces into components. I will say that again. In the case where one of your forces isn't lined up with your coordinate system, you must break up your off-axis force into components. I even put up on Edsby a whole document about how to break up a vector into its components. It's for this purpose, not for the projectile motion stuff. It's for this. And some of you probably don't know how to do this. So I'm going to take a moment and kind of focus our attention on this part of the problem. And I want you to be very aware that I'm thinking about the people who I know struggle with the math stuff. You guys need to pay particular focus here. This is not the time to think it's 20 minutes until the bell rings and I can't wait to get out of here. Because I'm thinking it too, but I can ace tomorrow's quiz. So when I look at this, noticing that this is 30 degrees, for those of you who need some instructions, here's a simple set of instructions. You need to wrap a triangle around your angle. It's a weird statement, but put it into your notes because once we've done this once or twice, you'll know what to do. You're gonna wrap a triangle around your angle. Look, this 50 Newton force is 50 Newtons in that direction. Whatever that direction happens to be, I need to find out how much of that 50 Newton force is in the X direction and how much of that 50 Newton force is in the Y direction. So I am going to draw a triangle and when I do so, I'm going to wrap the triangle so that a right triangle exists with 30 degrees as one of its angles. So I'm gonna start at the origin and draw an arrow until I am directly below the vector I'm trying to break. And then I'm gonna turn and draw at a right angle another component. So that I have wrapped a triangle around my vector. Do you see now why it's an apt metaphor to say wrapping the triangle around the angle? It has to be a right triangle, but if you do it correctly, the one that's horizontal lines up with the X forces, and the one that is vertical lines up with the Y forces. X force. So now, I'm really talking to the real struggling kids. This side is the opposite, this side is the adjacent. Remembering my rules, sine of 30 will be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of 30 will be adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is 50 cosine 30 degrees. My opposite side is 50 sine 30 degrees. This is what it takes to break up an off axis force into its components. Now that I'm done, I can move on with solving the problem. Now, you can't see all that stuff in green. 
and, and I get that, but it should still be in your notes, correct, all right? What I'm going to do, you should not do on your diagram, but you might wanna sketch it off to the side to help you solve your question. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take and erase the off-axis component and redraw in this one, which I said was 50 cosine 30 degrees and 50 sine 30 degrees. Notice I've drawn the one that was in the Y direction right on top of the one that was already there. I've drawn the one that's in the X direction, just big and bold in the X direction. So I am left with a new diagram where all of the forces are lined up with the X direction and the Y direction. Can I keep going? Yes, ma'am. My next step is really, again, very formulaic. Just do what you're told. Take Newton's law and now break it up. Net force in the X direction, net force in the Y direction. I have MA here. I have to choose which direction to place it, but I've tried to be very careful to force it to be all in one direction. So I put it in the X direction, because that's the direction it accelerates, put zero for the Y direction. And now, gotta keep going, add up all the forces in the X direction and set them equal to MA. 50 cosine 30 degrees minus friction equals 10 times 2. The mass was 10. The acceleration was 2. The 50 cosine 30 is the part that's in the x direction. Friction was also in the x direction, but to the left, so it's negative. Next, add up all the forces in the y direction. Set them equal to zero. There are three forces in the y direction. I have upwards 50 sine 30 degrees plus the normal force minus 100 equals zero. <coughs> Now, looking at what I have, I have this relationship here. I, I can find the normal force from it. I know what it equals. I, I don't know what it equals. I think it's probably going to be like, you know, 75. But I know there's only one unknown in that relationship. Here, I have one unknown in this relationship. You know, the right side is 20. The left side is going to be like 43.3 minus F equals 20. I can figure out what F is. Now, doing math is worth like one point. But you understand how much went into getting to that point, right? So they're not going to give you a whole lot for figuring out what F is, but they're going to give you a whole lot if you can figure out what this is. And there might be small questions along the way, like what is the net force on the system? The net force in the system was 20 newtons. I'm not sure if you realize that. And, and I'm trying to call your attention to it. So listen really close. The net force in the system, net force equals MA. The mass was 10, the acceleration was two, the net force in the system was 20. 20 newtons. I don't have to do any work to know what the net force is in this problem. But that really oversimplifies what's happening. You understand, right? So if I ask for net force, I'm really not asking for very much. But I ask for friction, I'm asking for a lot. 
So you guys know what I mean when I say strip mall. I got some confused faces out there. There's like a door after a door after a door after, you know, like a Publix right there. You got the smoothie place and the nail place. When you're actually standing on the sidewalk, you can't tell what's what unless there's a sign in front of each door all the way down, right? From the street you can, but when you're on the sidewalk, not so much. So as I walk, I could see how far away I have to go to the next door if there were signs hanging. This is the sign that's hanging, good? So I wanna go down to the smoothie place and get a smoothie and try and forget about all this physics crap. So let's say that the sign has a mass of five kilograms. It's being held out there still, not moving. I don't want it swinging, I, don't, I want it to be nice and still so I can read it. So, two cables hold it. What's the tension in the two cables? That's the question. I want the two tensions. So is this a first law problem or a second law problem? First law. Definitely first law, the signs are staying still. So we know for sure net force equals zero. Your next step is to draw a free body diagram and get that dot right out there from the beginning. Start drawing your forces. Start at the top. I'm going to hit pause. The adjacent side is T2 cosine 30 degrees. Now I'm getting short on time, but once I've drawn those out, I don't need to worry about this force anymore. All I have to worry about are my components. They define the problem. So this is T2 sine 30. So now my instructions. I'm gonna take this and break it up into the net force in the X direction and net force in the Y direction. Since it's zero, both of these are zero. Now I'll follow my instructions. Add up all the forces in the X direction. Okay, T2 cosine 30 
minus T1, and set that equal to zero. Set that equal to zero. I can't do anything with that. There's two unknowns. But on the other hand, T2 sine 30 minus 50 equals zero. I can do something with this one. You will often reach a point where you'll have to figure out if there's something I can use. I can. T2 equals 50 divided by sine 30. That's 100. Once I know one, I can figure out the other. Now, please don't let this be lost on you. What was the weight of the sign? The mass was five kilograms, the weight was 50 newtons. If I'm supposed to be buying rope and I buy a 50 newton rope, is that gonna work? No, I need a rope that can withstand 100 newtons minimum. You're asking yourself, why would you even do that? Because if I use two ropes, the sign won't swing around in the wind. But that might mean I need stronger ropes. Clearly, it means I need stronger ropes. All right, folks.